Good morning again. I'm actually standing in for Mike Close, who I'm sure a lot of you know. Uh, two or three days ago, Mike said to me, um, I can't make Saturday. Can you do a talk? So I thought, yeah, okay. So what am I talking about? It's not wing it. I'm just wing it. So I wing it. This is Joystick Club, based at High Water Oak. I wing them, sorry, White Water. Oh. You've gone back. Go the other way. Go the other way. That's it. Okay. Right. Yeah. Water Army, paddle planes, uh, simulators, and on field flying. One of the objectives of the club is to get youngsters interested in aviation. We've already heard the younger you can get them, the more likely it is to stick. So that's the basic premise on. Oh, other way. Now, now you can go. Go to the right. The other way. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I can build a screwdriver. I'm useless for these things. <laughs> so, we are out and about in the summer. In the winter, we have uh, monthly meetings. We also construct models in the close season. We, uh, <clears throat> entertainment evenings, we obviously invite all sorts of people to come and sing to us and dance with us and generally have, uh, have fun. Be known as Davis of the Flocker. <laughs> a story about that. Um, in 2014, we were invited to go to Highclere Castle for the anniversary of the centenary of the First World War. And they said, Bring your pebble planes. Yeah, no problems. Bring your First World War pebble planes. We hadn't got to them. So <laughs> these were built under uh, a very tight time schedule, which is why they've got no uh, pedals. As the Fokker and uh, one of our colleagues was a superb SE5. The reason I brought that is to show you how simple the construction is. I've actually got my construction notes um, with me. I had a single A4 piece of paper with three views uh, plan, side elevation, front elevation. With the, the little notes I sent, good luck. That, that was it. So the whole thing came basically from here. If it looks right, it is right. Now, the reason why I make that point is because, as you can see, we then moved on to uh, tricycle undercarriage jet planes. And David here, who's the bigger genius than the I, sound cards and all sorts of things. Uh, we took that to Benson, and the, the reds were very dismissive until we showed them the engine noise and the actual LEDs at the back that lit up. And there's a picture somewhere of that with Red 10 at our at Benson two or three years ago. This is one that um, Matthew will know all about. Uh, I was tasked basically with just finishing it. It's um, a harbour that's based at Waltham. And the day we took the little one in, the chap actually pilot threw the big one in. I've never seen the little one before. He couldn't believe his eyes. He rushed back to his plane to get his camera out so he could take photographs. But this is now living at the shuttle there. More pics of the, the engine and the, the general uh, demeanor. Uh, basically, what you've got is commercial uh, waste pipe. And the engine acts as a piece of plywood. It took three days to cut out the cylinders and the push rods of our plant sticks. And silver pipe is nice and swine to the plant. So every time you put the mask on, you took it to play out. <laughs> Now, you'll see how we've come on leaps and bounds. This is our latest beast, in which uh, I think you'll agree it is rather impressive. You compare that with that soapbox at the back of the room, and you can see 
a lot of effort has gone into this. Again, this will have the uh, super electric motors and sound cars and all sorts of bits and things. It's also been built slightly larger, so the, um, the more robust people can actually <laughs> sit in it. We did actually have with the SE5 at um, Ive Northolt, a young Asian mother came up with her two kids. So she was about so big. She'd been on EastEnders and various other She was a TV actress. She said, look, mum, aren't we having fun? So we said, why don't you get in it? So we actually pulled through this thing, and she did, she did fit. I mean, the SE5 was a bit bigger than the clock. She had a marvellous time. So she would actually fit quite comfortably in that uh, very nice looking plan. I'm sure this time next year we'll be able to bring some pictures of the completed uh, item for your attention. But as you see, it's, it is very impressive. Right, that's me done. We now hand over to the brains of the outfit. Can you turn the sound up? <coughs> children. Um, so in addition to the pedal planes, which is a, a teaser to get you interested, uh, we then moved on to the next stage, uh, and, uh, which are uh, uh, simulators. Um, for this year we will have uh, two simulators. The Tomahawk uh, is now in its sixth year of operation, started out as a stimulator, then became computerised, and um, during the last year we added the uh, business, the PC, the software, and other um, fully working instruments to the uh, as a dashboard. The moment we're building a semi care simulator uh, that started last year, we were kindly given a, uh, a, a life expired 3x6 driven simulator by CAE, not so very heavy thing, but we are now building that. Uh, the control interface are almost complete. We're doing loop testing earlier this week on that. Uh, just going to put it into a waterproof enclosure and hopefully it will be in operation in the middle of this year. This is a report on the enhancements we've made to the joystick close tomahawk simulator and an update on the progress of the Seneca sim. We've added fully functioning instruments, updated the PC and enhanced the flight controls. So what I've managed to do now is get all five instruments that I've got so far onto a single instrument card um, together with um, filtering. The new panel was bench tested with x 11. Having tested the instruments, the interface board was fitted. An instrument panel installed. Thank you. 
going from and the elements. So far we've managed to terminate all the uh, front end cables for the main control. So we have down here the pitch and roll. So if we do that, we see what's happening. So that's that's pitch. And then roll's the other one, there's the roll. So that's now working. And across here is the um, rudder. And basically what that does, you can see what happens, so the pop's moving around. There's two interface boxes on the wall here. This one here handles the engine instrument and all of the analog inputs from the pitch roll and the yaw. And the one across the other side handles the other half of the instrument, the main panel. And all the switch inputs, so all the buttons and everything that get pressed in the cockpit come out here. And these boxes are interfaced with the main flight suit computer through USB ports. I've managed to buy another display package, which is a little bit closer to the TAS 600, which is what I've put on here to show you instead. Um, basically, it's got all primary instruments on the left hand side. Um, but there's a moving map on the right hand side as well, which I thought was a little bit closer to the NS600. Uh, but it includes things like the radio frequencies, the NASCOM, um, also DME readout or DME link, um, as well as the transponder code as well. So I thought that was quite good to see the uh, autopilot now trading around to follow the heading. Very, very close to actually fitting the uh, whole lot into the center canal. Um, just waiting for a couple more bits to come in. Um, then we should be able to fit the slot in the Seneca and uh, commission it up, make sure it's all working properly. The Joystick Club is committed to providing a first class flying experience to young people and is very grateful for all the financial support and for the many volunteers without whom none of this would have been possible. <laughs> system, so we're going to be very busy uh, 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 making our own training course so we can demonstrate that uh, Seneca simulator to youngsters. They soon get hold of I'm flying the Tomahawk, and it's quite, probably quite straightforward. But uh, I really like to focus on navigation and giving youngsters an opportunity to get the charts out, programming the uh, waypoints, way the GNS, etc. And uh, we're all going to have a lot of fun. A lot of hard work by uh, volunteers on this. You can see them flying on that. Thank goodness we managed to acquire the uh, circuit diagrams for our Fresica simulator because if we hadn't got the, uh, the PLIDs we would have been stuck for uh, So uh, just to, just to, to finalise, this is what jo some of the joystick of the game for public events, uh, shuttle bus once a month. Uh, and uh, in addition we, uh, we take the, uh, the Tomahawk simulator and the pedal plates to schools several times a year and they'll see the desk up, etc., video shows, and uh, two or three RAF family days. So we volunteers are very, very busy. Thanks for uh, watching. Any, any questions? <laughs> if that lot doesn't turn kids on, I think I shall take up the call. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just quickly mention that there is one correction of the date. It's the 22nd of September, which is the Brooklyn's Aviation Day. And the UK and yes, hold the world record of pedal planes in one place, 31 of them. And we have a bit of friendly rivalry going between the EAA and ourselves at Oshkosh. So on the 24th of July, they will beat our record by a number of planes. So we can anticipate about 35, and then we'll take it back again in September. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've been doing that for a couple of years, but it's a great after-school activity of pedal plane. It's something tangible that gets built up with woodwork and metalwork and gets kids involved. And it's something that builds up, and then you can either give them to a special needs school, paint them up in your own school colours for publicity purposes, or so again, if you want any information about Pedal Planes, happy to, to be the person for that. I've got my notes, so do come and have a word over lunch perhaps, and I'll show you how easy it was to make that, uh, that soapbox. <laughs>